Florida nearly shocked the top ranked Hawkeyes with brilliant performance. Today, Michigan State against Michigan. The eyes of Michigan are focused on East Lansing today to watch a rivalry that began in 1898. A clash between two schools located just 65 miles apart. Michigan and Michigan State. It's a rivalry that sometimes divides family and friends. Some proudly wear the maize and blue of the Wolverines, others just as proudly the green and white of the Spartans. It's a family feud. It's a war. It's Michigan against Michigan State. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. The surprising Michigan Wolverines come to Spartan Stadium to meet a vastly improved Michigan State team. Michigan State trying to do something they have not done since 1967. That's win two in a row over the Wolverines. It's a big college football afternoon on CBS. For instance, we have an outstanding clash between Florida State and Auburn. Tennessee plays at Florida, and then that battle in the Cotton Bowl between Oklahoma and Texas. Jim Nance and Pat Hayden all day long will keep you posted on scores and highlights. And right now, let's go back to New York, and here's Jim Nance. All right, Gary, the home field advantage still holding true in those baseball playoffs. The Cardinals came up with two in the first, two more in the second. Today. Michigan met Michigan State for the first time in 1898. And over the past 15 years, the Wolverines have dominated. But last year, this play, an 87-yard punt return by Spartan Bobby Morse, turned the game around, giving Bo Schembechler only his third loss in 16 games against State. And it sent Spartan supporters home happy. Today, they'll meet for the 78th time, Michigan versus Michigan State, live from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. Sports presents College Football. Live from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, it's the University of Michigan Wolverines versus the Michigan State Spartans. Today's game is sponsored by your Toyota dealer. The 1986 Celica, totally redesigned for performance and style. Who could ask for anything more? Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light, it doesn't get any better than this. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. 76,000 plus in Spartan Stadium on the campus of Michigan State. And now here come the Wolverines of Michigan. The Dean of Big Ten Coaches, Bo Schembechler in his 17th year. Coming off his worst season ever of 6-6 six and six in 1984 and off to his best start since 1978. And here come the Spartans of Michigan State. George Perlis in the third year of a five-year rebuilding program. So the color excitement of Big Ten football. Welcome to And again, everybody, I'm joined by the coach, Eric Parsegan. Era, I am impressed. Michigan is a surprise team of the year, and you picked him in the top 20. You're the only guy that picked him in the preseason polls. Well, I was a little lucky, but a couple things influenced me, Gary. First of all, Bo Schembechler's track record. The man has won 80% of his games since he's been at the University of Michigan. He either, either won or co-shared 10 conference championships in 16 years. Last year, they were decimated by injuries. Harbaugh went down in this ball game, and I knew he would be back. Also, they were hard hit at offensive line injuries. And again today, they have lost their two starting guards, 
Heimerstein, as well as Hussar, so it might hurt them today. Era, their defense has been outstanding. They've given up only 21 points in the first four games. I really have admired the Michigan defense. Year in and year out, they're one of the leaders defensively in scoring defense. Now, this year, they're leading the nation again. They've only given up one touchdown, 13 interceptions, and they're ranked fourth in the nation. You know, people like to see offense, but I'll tell you, Big D wins. Speaking of offense, what about Bobby McAllister of Michigan State? He directed the Spartans over 500 yards in offense. Do you think he's blossomed now? I really do. I had the privilege, privilege of doing that game last week, and he just exploded. After two ordinary games, all of a sudden, he goes against Iowa, has 580 yards. And you put Lorenzo White together with that, I think the Wolverines have their hands full this afternoon. The 78th time these two clubs will square off against each other. Michigan against Michigan State, a sellout here in East Lansing. Michigan. Let's see, Michigan and Michigan State. The series has been dominated by the Wolverines, but the Spartans won last year, 19 to 7. It's a gray overcast day. Temperature, however, in the 60s. The wind out of the south at 50 miles per hour. It did rain earlier today, and there are showers in the forecast. Getting ready to kick off now will be Rick Sukowitz, a sophomore out of Troy, Michigan. This is Craig Johnson, who had a brilliant game last week against Iowa, back for the kickoff. Michigan won the toss. They deferred. Michigan State as an end result, receiving to open the game. This is Johnson. And Johnson will be dropped at the 15-yard line. Michigan State's offense erupted for 580 yards last week. McAllister was just simply brilliant. Morse the jack of all trades at fullback, and Lorenzo White averaging 166 yards a game. Ingram, a big play man, had seven catches last week. And watch this guy, Ryzen. He's just a freshman. He's going to be superb. And Butch Roll, a very dependable tight end. The NFL likes him. There's what they did last week, the most ever, by George Perlis in his three years at Michigan State. Ingram, number 11 in motion. Lorenzo White. White will go for three yards to the 18. Jeff Akers, number 33, and Brad Cochran on the stop. The offensive line of Michigan State. A very dependable line. Man, Derrick's a freshman from Canada. They like him. Rodgers, their fastest offensive lineman. Watchman really is an overachiever working hard. Wojciechowski, he's the backbone of that offensive line. Bogdalik, an excellent pass blocker. And this is the guy who was just superb last week, Lorenzo White. And as we mentioned, Johnson came in a relief roll and did likewise very well. Fumble. Michigan has it. And those are the turnovers era that so often decide these type games. Crucial games like this. I think McAllister pulled away, Gary, a little early. This is what it appeared from this vantage point. There is a plus seven for Michigan, a plus four, so they were both on the plus side coming in. Both of them have done a good job, but getting, getting a break like this early in the ball game, it's tough to stop a team. Here you see right there that McAllister didn't appear that he got the ball very clean. And of course, Michigan comes in, takes advantage of it, and they have the ball in excellent position. That's Andy Moeller that got on it, Aaron. Andy Moeller, the son of Gary Moeller, the assistant head coach and defensive coordinator. First down for the 15. Jamie Morris. Jamie Morris and company. Let's look at that offensive picture for the Michigan Wolverines. Harbaugh, boy, when they lost him last year, their season went out the window. Gerald White, he was a former tailback, now playing fullback. Here's Morris. He's just been superb. Kolasar is just a freshman. They like his speed. Jokic is six foot eight. And Caddis, they think he's the best tight end of the country. From the 15, second down and nine. Jamie Morris again to the 10. He's to the nine-yard line. Morris hit by Dean Altabelli, the strong safety of Michigan State. Here's to me that Michigan's going to test 
Michigan State early. They're going to run that ball off tackle with Jamie Morris. This time they get some excellent blocking at the point of attack. And one of the tough things to do against Michigan State is to run with consistency inside because of their stunts and games. Third down and three. And you can see Michigan's been very effective on third down. Third and three. Hits Caddis. Touchdown. Touchdown catch of the season. Point after attempt now by Mike Gillette, number 19. The freshman hits it down the center. 7 to nothing. The Wolverines. Take a look at this touchdown. I think Michigan State was deployed with the idea that Michigan was going to run the football. Harbaugh comes right back into the pocket. Caddis, 6-6. Six, six. Right there is wide open in the end zone. And Al Cabelli has no chance against that size tight end. So characteristic of Michigan. Able to come up with the turnover and punch it in. Jim Harbaugh, who reads the defenses so well, hits Caddis, who you're going to see in the NFL. All the right parts in all the right places. Napa's putting smiles on American faces. Napa means auto parts. So dependable, they may be the best part of your car. More than 100,000 parts for import and domestic vehicles are available through over 6,500 Napa stores all across the country. Or get Napa quality... Snap from center. Took a little time, a minute 22, to take it in. Sutkowitz kicking off for the Wolverines. Craig Johnson back deep. He'll not get to that one. It didn't take long for the Wolverines. And it... Ended on a nine-yard touchdown strike, but let's see what set it up first. McAllister, see if you can pick it up, Aaron. Well, I thought at first that it might have been McAllister pulling out, but another look at this appears that the snap might have been a little bit off. And so, on the third play of the drive, Jim Harbaugh, the coach's son, coming back, setting up, and throwing the touchdown pass, his sixth of the year. He's been completing 62% of his passes this year. 7-0 Michigan. Now, on the kickoff, we have a penalty play. Offside against Michigan State. That's Brad Cochran, the All-American candidate at cornerback. Offside. On the receivers. Decline. First. Jim Kimmerling indicating that Michigan refused the penalty. Well, because... Uh, you make him go 80 yards, he's going to kick the next one into the end zone probably, so you always want to try to make your opponent go 80 yards if you can, if they're going to score. Gallister may be a little shaky after that mishandled snap. Lorenzo White had trouble hanging on to that ball. He'll get two yards on the play, second and eight. Bo Jackson and Auburn, he's off to a good start. Let's go back to New York. Gary, watch the patience of Bo Jackson. He takes a pitch and he waits for something to develop. A small crease, then he turns on the afterburners, and then the strength again. You just can't keep him out of the end zone. Let's go back to Gary Nera. Auburn exploding against the Florida State team, but Bobby Bowden's team have the capabilities of coming back. Second down and nine. White again. And he almost has the first down out to the 30-yard line. Andy Muller made the tackle. That was a, this is an excellent job by Michigan State by overloading a side by formation. They had more people offensively to their offensive right side than Michigan had to that side. As a result, they created an opening. You see Gantt number 14 coming in there with help from other Wolverines. Good call by the Spartans. It was a first down. Let's look now at the trenches. The Spartans blocking up front. You can see sometimes they'll just brush block and let White cut off of it, and it worked effectively there. It's White again, and White is a workhorse for this Michigan State team. 
It's Mahler along with Mike Hammerstein on the stop. This Michigan defense has just been superb, allowing only 5.2 points a game. And here they are, Scarcelli. Not spectacular, but steady. Mester's young, but he runs very well. He's a sophomore. Harris is like a stump. You can't blast him out of there. Hammerstein is playing like an All-American. And Akers, they feel, has outstanding ability at that outside linebacking spot. Second down now. Seven yards to go. Ryzen and Ingram split to the short side of the field. McAllister tries to hit White. Good reaction by Mike Mallory. Mallory was on him instantaneously. Third down, seven. Mike Mallory and his troops at the linebacking spot. Boy, they're smart in the middle. Mallory and Moeller, they're just outstanding. Rivers, he was the UPI defensive back of the week in his interception a week ago. Cochran, well, he may be the best that Bo's ever had. And Ivan Hicks, he's the brother Dwight, playing for San Francisco. And Gant, Tony Gant, they're glad to have him back. He calls the defensive signals back deep. And you can see here one of the reasons why the defense has played so well. They've only been on the field 23 minutes. That's 10 minutes less than a year ago. Third down, seven. Ingram, Tony Gant, they're glad to have him back. He calls the defensive signals back deep. And you can see here one of the reasons why the defense has played so well. They've only been on the field 23 minutes. That's 10 minutes less than a year ago. Third down, seven. Ingram. No good. He was out of bounds. Mark Ingram, the junior from Flint, Michigan, could not keep his feet in bounds. One of the interesting things that Michigan State is doing in this ball game, last week they put their double, double flanker against Iowa clear to the wide side of the field and the wing to the short side. Today they have changed that. They're putting the combo or the double flankers out to the short side with a wing. But Michigan has adjusted exceptionally well in this second possession that Michigan State has had. That doesn't surprise you, does it? Not a bit. They're a great defensive team. Eric Campbell back for this punt. Greg Montgomery will punt it for Michigan State. He's the transfer from Penn State, and he's been superb. Big rush. It's blocked. And it's going to be covered in the end zone. Touchdown! Peter Heron blocked it. Ed Hood is the guy that fell on it for six points. He came right up the middle. I can't believe that it doesn't appear that anyone blocked him. He came clean. We'll see that in a moment. Mike Gillette, point after attempt, and what a stunning start for Michigan State. Watch over the left shoulder of the center. See what happens. He comes clean. Oh, he gives him a little limp leg, and the fullback goes clear across the green, does not pick up the first man. The mistake was made by the upback. And of course, you can see that Michigan has jumped out now to a 14 to nothing lead. What a start for the Wolverines. And so Michigan, who has been so dominant in this series, playing like the third-ranked team that they are. They're playing with great savvy, and they're very opportunistic. Michigan State at four minutes, you're down by 14. This can't give the ball to your opponent the 16-yard line and then give them another score on a block kick. They've only traveled 16 yards, Gary, for two, four, two scores. A young team like Michigan State, this is testing their mettle. Really is. They're not going to change anything offensively or defensively. They really haven't had a chance yet. They just got to avoid those kind of mistakes in this game. You know, you and I were just discussing last night about breakdowns on punt coverage, and it really broke down there. Certainly did. It was a great job by uh, Dieter Heron as he came through there. He gave him a little lip leg, and the fullback, who was the up back, was supposed to come across the block. Sakowitz kicking off. He gets this one very high. Craig Johnson. And he's dropped at the 15. Michigan swarming down there. That's Doug Mallory, number eight. 
Next week, we're going to have a college football doubleheader. Purdue and Jim Everett, the outstanding passing attack against the Ohio State Buckeyes, ranked 15th in the country. That's live, 12 o'clock Eastern. And then to follow, what a game this is shaping up to be. Number one and number three ranked Iowa and Michigan. That will start at 3.30 Eastern. And some of you in the southeast will see this Auburn-Georgia Tech game. And Auburn, as you can see, is off and rolling today. From the 15, first down. McAllister to White. And he shows his athleticism on that play. He gave him a leg and took it away on two different occasions, a gain of five. Gary, he really is an outstanding running back. I was impressed with him. I mean, before we even saw the game last week when he had 226 yards. And don't discount him or cut him out of this football game. Bo Schimbeckler, we drove over to see him at Ann Arbor. I thought he was really calm and collected yesterday. Surprisingly so. He must have known some things we didn't know. <laughs> I don't think he thought he'd be up this fast. 14-0. Right. Second down, five from the 20. Bobby Morse, the fullback. He's going to be at least a yard short of the first down. Morse stopped by Andy Moeller again. Moeller is the leading tackler. You know, Michigan State does not give the football very often to their fullbacks. Well, as you know, that uh, George Perlis told us yesterday is going to give the ball to the fullback on the draw because last week Lorenzo White ran for 12, they averaged 12 yards per carry on 11 draws. Now, they were trying to fool Michigan. They didn't, uh, didn't get 12 yards on it. Third down, two yards to go. Morse and White in the backfield. Gives to Morse again, and he's going to get the first down. It's Moeller again making the stop, and again they go to Bobby Morse, and you know the entire defense is looking for number 34, and they get this guy. That's exactly right, Gary. Michigan is keying on Lorenzo White. He's the one that's going to beat him, and so they've given the ball to Morris twice, and we may see more of that with Morris catching passes as well as running the draw. Jim Harbaugh warming up. He hasn't really had that much of an opportunity. He came in quickly through a touchdown pass and finds his troops ahead 14 to nothing. McAllister off to White again. White gets close to the 29-yard line. A pickup of three. He'll be stopped again by Andy Muller and Jeff Akers is also over there to make the stop. You have to really watch the cutback ability of Lorenzo White. That's what he hurt Iowa with last week. Now Michigan has done an excellent job. That's the same play that he was running up and down the field a week ago, but Michigan has done a nice job of containing him thus far. What they do, they flatten out those middle linebackers, Coach, without getting too technical about it. But they will step into it rather than go laterally down the line. They'll make a flat line across for those linebackers. No bubbles. There it is again. And White will make it to the 30, and that's all. He's still going to be seven yards short of the first down. And Mike Mallory, Mallory is over there again. Mike Mallory, Mallory and Moeller, what a background. Mike's dad's a coach at Indiana. Andy Moeller's dad is a defensive coordinator. You got to know they know a little something about this game, huh? And you know, it's like osmosis, isn't it? Exactly. Just like my own son. <laughs> I mean, my son played for me. He learned everything that I know about the game. That's not much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, though, they, they do. They have some football maturity that other people do not have. Third down and eight now for Michigan State. Roll goes in motion, the tight end. The Gallisters trying to scramble away from Starcelli. And he slips and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. As we said, it did rain early today, and there's quite a bit of moisture on the field. McAllister did get outside of Scarcelli's move. He, he spun and got away from the blocker. You see if we can see it here in this picture. Scarcelli's coming from the right portion of your screen. You'll see him spin off that, make a full spin, but McAllister's already outside of him. And he slips here on this turf that rained all morning, as Gary pointed out. It's the water, little water on the hash mark side. Boy, can you imagine what's going through Drake Montgomery's mind as he goes back for this punt? The first one blocked. Let's see if they can protect him this time. He hits a beauty. Beauty. Eric Campbell at the 24. Oh, as he hits. And Michigan State with a beautiful tackle in the open field. They've got it. John Buddy is the guy that nailed him. Also, excellent help from Shane Bullock. And that's the turnover that could get Michigan State back in this one. They needed a break exactly like this. Eric Campbell, number five, has been injured, had a shoulder injury. He's also lost a lot of weight. 
did exactly the same thing in the Notre Dame game in the opening ball game on a punt return, fumbled the football. This is a big break that Michigan State needed. A 46-yard punt by Montgomery. And then Campbell separated from the ball. Michigan State has it at the 35. I bet we see Gant in there after this at that uh, safety position of punt returns. Campbell has not been well. He's been ill. He's down to 158 pounds. Ingram comes in motion. Flag on the play. to White. And he's dropped at the 31. Ingram, who was in motion, was going towards the line of scrimmage. No question about it. Be a five-yard penalty. You cannot turn up the field before the ball is snapped. Exactly. And so here at East Lansing, we've had a lot of excitement with only 7.46 left in this first quarter. 14-0, Michigan scoring after recovering a fumble and then scoring on a blocked punt. Right now, Michigan State recovering on a punt as a football in the Michigan end of the field. I'll take the five-yard penalty, make it first and 15. We have an illegal shift against the offense. First down. That'll be back at the 40. That's in the Cotton Bowl. Two unbeaten. Tied a year ago, wasn't it? 15 15? Right. Auburn now, see, Florida State's coming back. They have that capability. Florida, Tennessee. First down now. 15 to go. Lorenzo White. And he goes nowhere and a swarming Michigan defense. What a marvelous job by the Michigan defense. Lorenzo, or I should say Michigan State with Lorenzo White, White a week ago, used that same drive draw play, hide in there behind that center and right guard, and then try to sneak through there. But the linebacker stayed at home, and the backside stayed at home, and really stopped that play. Interesting thing about White, though, Coach, he gets stronger as the game wears on. He's one of those backs who needs to carry the ball a lot. He can go 40 times, no problem. You know, he's not a little guy. This guy's 205 and can run. Game wears on. He's one of those backs who needs to carry the ball a lot. He can go 40 times, no problem. You know, he's not a little guy. This guy's 205 and can run. Run the 41 now. Second down and 16 yards to go. Bobby Morse in motion. McAllister showing good poise to roll the tight end. He'll be knocked out of bounds. Pick up a maybe two, three yards on the play. That was Brad Cochran defending on the play. You see, he fakes the ball here to White, who goes to the sideline and then throws to the wide side of the field. As you see, roll break out. It wasn't for much yardage, but it is a completion. And uh, it's, oh gosh, it wasn't much yardage, was it? No, it's Gary? third and 13, Coach. Yeah, I thought he had picked up about five yards on it. He only got a couple yards on it. That's the athleticism again, though, of Cochran. He can cover so much ground. Tremendous corner man. Ingram. Rison split out, along with Bobby Morse. The single back is white. Third and 13. And he's just throwing that one away. And almost intercepted, and that was not a wise throw. Well, that was bad judgment on the part of McAllister. Now, he did not throw one poor ball last week. He used good judgment all day. Should have thrown the ball out of bounds. That very easily could have been intercepted. You're exactly right. And so it's going to bring up a fourth down. It appeared the ball was going to be intercepted right here. Ball's bopped around a little bit. Ingram almost stepped in there and got the ball. That was Tony Gant that almost picked it off. There he is. He is like a center fielder back there. And McAllister, I think, just like Michigan State, a little shaky. I think the start has affected his play. I'm sure it has. Montgomery will punt on fourth down. Tony Gant, as you mentioned, he's in there. You called that one, Coach. He's yep. back for this punt. He hit this one high. And they're going to down it at the one. Beautiful pooch kick. I don't believe I have seen a punt go higher than that. 36 yards to the one. Greg Smith, number 80, downed it there. Really come back after having a punt block, a beautiful pooch kick out at the one, and he's giving his team a chance now to get some points on the board if they can hold there. 
you know, Gary, that's not an easy thing to teach. I had a lot of punters that always wanted to put it in the end zone. You tell them just to bunt punt it or pooch kick it. Montgomery did a beautiful job. From the one, Harbaugh and Michigan with a 14 to nothing lead. Colazar, 40 in motion. Jamie Morris and the five, seven sophomore lunges to the seven. Jamie Morris, Gary for Michigan. Well, the National League playoffs, the championship series continuing, and St. Louis trying to get back into that series, trailing two games to none, playing at Bush Stadium, 4-1 lead in the fifth inning. Morris did a very good job on that play error. There wasn't that much running room and still got additional yardage. Got him out of real, you know, that when you got the ball at your own one or two yard line, you can't afford any kind of mistake. At least he's got him out where they can punt it. Second down and four. It's Morris again. This time, he'll be stopped around the 10-yard line. Shane Bola, number 41, the fourth leading tackler in the Big Ten, and of course, his daddy, now the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. They're about a yard short. It's third down coming up. The whole idea of defense that George Curlis uses, you see right there, Shane Bola is a middle linebacker, and he is. Try they try to keep him free by having the lineman, defensive lineman, third. keep all the blockers off of him, and he stepped in there beautifully there and executed it just the way you're supposed to. And another coach's son. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a third down, and it's just a matter of inches now. Two tight ends, Cattles and Jeff Brown come in. Harbaugh, who's big and strong at 6'3 and 205 pounds, gets the first down. And so Michigan gets out of a very difficult situation from the one, and they get a new series. Well, I'll tell you, Gary, when I was coaching, I hated to have that ball back in my own one or two yard line. You're working out of your own end zone, and any kind of slip, any kind of a mistake can be very costly. At least they have it out in working room now. What's interesting is you look at Bo Schimbeckler, is his team able to run right at Michigan State. They usually try to shut that down in the middle and make you go outside. Right, that's a very important key in this ball game, whether or not Michigan can consistently run inside. The two starting guards are out of there, so they're a little patched up. Here's Morris. And he just kind of picks his way to the 20. Phil Parker, the two-time All-Big Ten safety, made the stop for Michigan State. Lorenzo White trying to get some advice on how to shake those Michigan defenders. <laughs> well, he's a great back. Talking to the Michigan coaches there, they say he's got that ability to give a leg and take it away from him. He's one of the best that I have seen in a long time, and I mean that in all seriousness. He'll show us before the day's over, I think. Second down now, four yards to go. Campbell and Yoki split up. Campbell comes in motion. Morris again. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. Kelly Quinn, so quick at the defensive end spot. And Shane Bulla, the mid inside linebacker over to make the stop. It's third down and still two yards to go. Excellent uh, defensive coverage on the part of Michigan State's part. They really got up the field quickly, shut off the opportunity for Jamie to try to turn the corner. Michigan State is not big era, but boy, they run and pursue. Very quick, they play tough, hard-nosed defense. But they are young. This is the third year of a five-year rebuilding program that George Perlis talks about. He says they're about on schedule. Third and two, double tight end alignment. On the option is Harbaugh. And he has dropped Phil Parker. That's the reason he's a two-time All-Big Ten performer. Great job, but on the option play, it appeared that Michigan did not have a trailing back to pitch the ball to. There wasn't anyone to option. And uh, Harbaugh was forced to keep it. So a mix up. And Parker stormed in and threw him for a five yard loss on the play. And that means Monty Robbins will come in and punt. And he has been very inconsistent. Look at the difference in his average from a year ago. Shank won last week. He hit this one. Oh, picturesque. This is Bobby Morse. And remember, he took a punt last year, 87 yards for a touchdown that gave Michigan State the victory. 55-yard punt, a five-yard return. Jeff Akers on the stop, Michigan by 14. And then back east, there has been somewhat of a surprise in that Florida 
game and Tennessee suffering their first setback of the year and Florida under Galen Hall coach has not lost a game he's tied twice he really has done a good job since taking over the helm of the Gators not many coaches are undefeated in two seasons <laughs> After that beautiful punt of 55 yards, Michigan State trailing 14 to nothing, has it at their own 34. Bobby McAllister to Ingram, and helmet to helmet, he is hit on the near side by Garland Rivers. Bo Jackson in the Heisman chase, and I think today he's going to help his uh, qualifications, his credentials even more. Look at that. Looks like a real ball game, too. It's still alive, 31-24. Boy, you can't relax against the Seminoles. <laughs> That's said very well. No game after that incomplete pass. Second down, 10. Excellent reaction that time by Garland Rivers. Gallister in trouble, and down he goes. That's Mark Messner, the sophomore from... Milford, Michigan. He is very young, but you can see how quick and active he is. Gary, uh, couldn't quite see it on the film here, but Ingram is trying to go out and up. They're trying to bait Garland Rivers, but they're in a double, double coverage, and he is knocked out of bounds and allows Messner to come in for the sack. Beautiful defensive coordination on the part of the secondary, as well as the pass rush. Terrific work by Michigan. He came right over that offensive line. Messner did, and that's the sacks that have been given up this or been actually executed by the Michigan defense. They've done it all this year. It's now third and 18. Michigan last week was just superb. They had seven turnovers, five interceptions. They just make you cough up the football. McAllister. Going deep. This is rising. It's out of bounds, and excellent defense by Tony Gant. Tony Gant broke his leg last year against Wisconsin. They say he still has to warm up a long time to get that flexibility, but he got back in that one. If folks want to see how a defensive back, what he's looking at, you can see here as McAllister lofts the ball up, hopeful of getting a, a completion. But the Michigan defense is all over. That's Tony Gant, number 14, leaping for the ball. Number one, Ryzen, Andre Ryzen, slips and falls. But the pressure on McAllister has been tough by the Michigan rush. Talk about pressure. Montgomery's back again for the putt. He hits a good one. Gary Campbell now is back for this one. They're going to let it bounce. And it's going to go out of bounds inside the 35. 40-yard punt. Tomorrow, it's an NFL doubleheader here on CBS. Many of you will see the Giants against the Bengals in the first game, and that'll be followed by a rematch of the NFC Championship game as unbeaten Chicago, the monsters of the midway. Travel to San Francisco seeking revenge for last year's loss. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL today, and Mike Ditka has those Dr. Chicago Bears rolling. Dr. The line of scrimmage will be the 33-yard line for Michigan. Is Bo smiling? Sure is. He likes the exchange there. They picked up considerable yardage. There's Iowa, who next week will play Bo's team in Iowa City. Air Force, 5-0, looking for their sixth win. Look at this, Ohio State. First down, Michigan. Colasar in motion. This is Gerald White. And he'll get a yard to the 35-yard line. Anthony Bell, the left side linebacker, making the stop, along with Tim Moore. 22. Gerald White, tackled by Anthony Bell, 51. We gave you what Bo Jackson has done, the fact he's in the race for the Heisman, but what about this guy? 14 touchdowns. He was superb last week in that win over Michigan State. And Robbie Bosco, averaging 373 yards a game. That is phenomenal when you stop and think about it. They know how to throw the ball to Provo. Four seconds left in this first quarter. Second down, nine. White wants to throw. He breaks out of it. First down. Ball is fumbled, but I think it's been ruled down. He was tackled and down, and so Michigan will have the ball at the 47, an 18-yard pickup on the play. White wanted to throw, but nothing was there. Trying to throw the halfback pass here. 
Gerald White, who is really one of the best athletes on the team, he can do a little bit of everything, is evidenced by the fact Bo was going to have him throw here. But look how resourceful he is. He gives them a hip. White does not have the great open field speed, but from tackle to tackle, he is tough. And he takes it to the 47 of Michigan State before Ron Rowe made the stop. 14-0, Michigan leading Michigan State. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your Michigan in that first quarter, jumping to a 14-0 lead, a very opportunistic Michigan team that's been characteristic of them all year long. They have it now at Michigan State's 47 first down. Bob Perryman in along with Gerald White in the backfield. Jim Harbaugh to throw and Colazar, the freshman, with his second catch of the season. That will be a first down catch. Dean Altabelli making the stop, a 12-yard pickup on the play. Excellent first down call. Tailback action holds the linebackers, and you can see Harbaugh putting the ball right there on the money to freshman Colasar on the sideline. Excellent call, first down. Colasar is one of those few guys that Bo will play as a true freshman. He has a lot of confidence in him. Likes his speed. Tough little guy, as he put it. First down now at the 35. Colazar in motion again. Straight ahead. And little or no gain on that play. Well, you're down 14 to nothing. Your confidence is shaken, Coach. What are you going to do if you're Michigan State? Well, it's a nightmare for George Perlis, Michigan State. I mean, he's had a block punt for a touchdown, a fumble at the 16-yard line. He's just got to hang in there tough. Now, they did get one break on the punt thing, but they're having a tough time because of what happened in errors, not in, not in execution by Michigan. You have the feeling they have to have something good happen to them. Exactly. Second down, 10 yards to go. Morris and Perryman in the backfield behind Harbaugh. Over the middle, that's Caddis. And a Burley tight end as a first down grab to the 18. There's a fight going on back here at the 45. Some pushing and shoving. That's Jim Ranella and Mike Krause, 51. You know the emotions are high when you see that kind of a skirmish going on completely away from the football. Ranella's just 5'9", about 210. George Perlis told me, he says, he knows leverage. He's a wrestler. He's very strong. Let's see if we can tell what happened after the pass. Well, there's Caddis right there, wide open. They put a blitz on on the left side. He's uncovered, and Harbaugh picked it up. He was a hot receiver. Boy, Caddis, those high-top shoes looks even bigger, doesn't he? <laughs> First down, 17-yard pickup on the play to the 18. Kodosar comes in motion. Jamie Morris. And Morris will be stopped just short of the 15 by Shane Buller. Let's go back down to New York for a scoring update. Here's Jim Nance. All right, Gary, the number one Hawkeyes in front at the half, 10 to nothing over Wisconsin. As expected, a defensive battle at the Cotton Bowl, 7-7-6, or that game has just started the fourth quarter. Auburn in front of Florida State, 31-27, 6-20 left in that ball game. Bo Jackson, 170 yards and two touchdowns. And Florida has beaten Tennessee, 17-10. to Let's go back to Gary and Eric. Thank you, Jim. Some big games today. We'll keep you posted as we go back to Jim and Pat Hayden throughout the day. Second down now, nine yards to go. Harbaugh and Jokic had it for a stride and could not hang on. An opposing target at 6'8", and Phil Parker all over him, and I think he's talking to him after the play. Look at the size difference as the two of them stand there. <laughs> Jokic at 6'8", and Parker is about 5'11". <laughs> but Parker's playing like he's 6'8". <laughs> Bo told us he feels Jokic has a great future ahead of him. He's going to be a great one someday. He was a basketball player, and of course, Bo was telling us, uh, he told me uh, yesterday as well as we were sitting there, Gary, told you that Jokic is having a little trouble learning to read the coverages, but he's coming along. Third down and nine. Harbaugh on the option, back to Morris. And Morris will be stopped short of the first down. It'll be a fourth down. Bill Parker flying over there, and Anthony Bell did a very good job stringing that play out. Good work. It's the first time that Michigan has run the option in this football game. Michigan State has not looked at the option. You look at it from an end zone view, it's a reverse pivot by Harbaugh. They pull the backside guard, Krause, and he comes down the line, deals it off, but you get good support by Bell coming up, number 51 right there, along with help from, uh, that's Parker. This will be now 
A 29-yard field goal attempt by Mike Gillette, and he got it. Mike Gillette, a freshman out of St. Joseph, Michigan. That is his ninth field goal of the year, and Michigan now has a 17 to nothing lead. 12-28 left in the first half. Parker, the free safety, I'd circle him. Watch him support all the way over and take that option play. Unbelievable by Parker in speed and quickness. There you see the reverse pivot by Harbaugh coming down the line on the option. Look at Parker come all the way from the backside. The ball is thrown out from up in the booth here. I thought they were going to get a lot more yardage. Parker comes over with Bell. Great defensive work. Boy, that really stretches the defense, doesn't it? He, that has to have that kind of play to stop it. He is really an outstanding free safety. So it all started with the uh, mishandled snap and then the block punt, and now it's continued on as Gillette just added a 19-yard field goal. Mike Gillette is already a big favorite of Bo Schembechler, just a freshman. He feels he's a tremendous competitor. Craig Johnson back to receive the kickoff from Suckowitz. Johnson dancing around. He's in trouble. Excellent reaction that time by Michigan. There's just no place to go, and they're going to start inside the five. The Toyota Leadership Award is presented weekly to a team member who has been singled out by his athletic department and faculty advisor for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. And today's game winners are Eric Caddis of Michigan, their tight end, and Pat Schumer, a backup center of Michigan State. And Toyota will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. That time, Johnson showed some of his inexperience. Yes, he, the wedge was set up in the middle of the field, and he was clear on the left hash mark. Excellent play by David Arnold, the freshman, who got back there to drop him from the three. Lorenzo White comes out of there. Looked like he was headed for a big gainer, and all of a sudden was snapped up by Garland Rivers, number 13. But that shows you, Era, his potential, an eight-yard pickup. There was good blocking at the point of attack, but Garland Rivers came up and made a great tack. Let's take a look at the blocking on the inside here that springs Lorenzo through here. It's a lead block. It's an isolation. He gets excellent blocking from the whole right side. Watch Garland Rivers, number 13, put a hit on him. He gets help from Mark Messner, number 60. Second down, two yards to go for Michigan State. This is going to be a rollout by McAllister. And he's going to get the first down to the 17-yard line. Doug Mallory flying over there to mark the stop. 17-0, Auburn rolling. Let's go to Pat Hayden. Let's get another highlight. Gary, this touchdown was set up by Bo Jackson. He's been running the ball all day long inside, but everybody forgot about Freddie Wygant, the wide receiver, a 13-yard touchdown run. That made the score 38-27 with 5-11 left. Let's go back to Gary. Well, looks like Auburn may have found a quarterback, huh? 17-0 here. First down now for Michigan State. Lorenzo White trying to cut back from the instant he got the ball. And they're just not going to get wide because Brad Cochran won't allow it. He just won't allow it. A loss of seven. You know, Gary, this says a lot about the Michigan defense. They're so well disciplined. They contain man stayed right there, and then Brad Cochran supported to the play. They're really a well disciplined defensive football team. Gary Moeller can be mighty proud of them. He is the defensive coordinator. Look at that. That's the stat that you were talking about. 240 yards a game. I'm even more impressed, though. They've only been getting up 5.2 points a game. Well, one touchdown in the first four games. Incredible. 17 nothing here. Second down now. 17 to go. McAllister going deep. Ingram is there. He made a catch. catch away from Brad Cochran who is the best corner man we've known a long time. Great job by Mark Ingram. Ingram last week had a 52-yarder. Now with a 50-yarder here. First down and now a timeout for Michigan State. 
Bobby McAllister wants to be sure he's got everybody in place. The Spartans use their first timeout. 10-13 to go. Michigan by 17, but the Spartans on the move. Folks, after that 50-yard pass, tomorrow on the NFL today, Irv Cross will be live in San Francisco before that Bears 49ers game. And ex 49er John Brody will be a special guest in the studio. Plus, you're going to have a live interview with Whitey Herzog and Tommy Lasorda. The Cards and Dodgers continue their National League Championship Series. It all begins 12.30 Eastern here on CBS. That might be the success error we're talking about that Michigan State needs to start to come back in this game. They really needed that pass. They're in four down area, 39-yard line. Now they need to make something happen. From the 39 of Michigan, Bernard Wilson now into the football game and a wide out. White and Bobby Morse still running backs. Lorenzo's got a hole to the 35, 30, 20, knocked out at the 16. Beautiful blocking on that play, Gary. Watch the tight end roll. Reach block right here. Hold out the defender. White turns it inside, then back outside. And he's got great speed. And I told you we'd hear from him before the day was out. 24-yard pickup to the 16 from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Just a sophomore. the other way cuts again and he's to the 11-yard line Can you believe that cut he is absolutely cutting on no area at all and we have a penalty play it was Harris along with Doug Mallory on the stop we have a dead ball personal foul on the defense half the distance it's interesting that Michigan has gone to an even defense. In other words, instead of staying in their standard defense where they have a man right on the center's nose, they have moved over, and it leaves some seams and daylight between the outside man and the inside man, and White is picking it very nicely. Andy Moeller is the man guilty of the penalty. Let's look at it. He'll be coming from the left-hand side. Here he comes, Moeller. And too late, and that will move the football to the six-yard line of Michigan. White takes such a beating, and you just don't need that added on. That was a good call by the official. It was a late hit. First, well, it's going to be second down, actually, and a yard to go for the first down after the penalty. Penalized from half the distance to the goal line. But Bernard Wilson, the only split out to the top of the screen. It's actually second down, less than a yard to get a first and goal. Looks like they've deployed to the goal line defense Michigan has. White, five, fighting to the one. And another penalty flag. Mark Messner made the stop initially for Michigan, but let's sort this one out. Might be holding on Michigan State. We have illegal use of the hands on the offense. Tough penalty down in here. So they now will have considerable distance to go to get that first and goal. They've got to make it to about the six-yard line to get a first and goal. Your answering service. He just gave five. It was a five-yard, which is illegal use of the hands. And it'll move it back to the 12-yard line. Ingram comes in. Vino Belk, the tight end, checks in. So it's second down now, and seven yards to go. And again, Michigan is deployed. The goal line look. Ingram split to the top of the screen. White. And that is the man who leads the Big Ten in tackles for loss. Hammerstein, that's his 10th tackle for loss this year. Game clean. I think the guard pulled. He stepped right on through. White never had a chance on the play. So now it's third and 12. You watch right here. He just, oh, he really made him miss. A great move. Wojciechowski in the 73 tried to block him. Hammerstein put a real slip block or slip rush on him. Great job by Hammerstein. Terrific. Well, he has been playing like that all year long. 
His brother, Mark, was hurt earlier this year. He was a starting guard for the Wolverines. Third down, 12. The pressure on. Messner, Scarcelli were there. Along with Ivan Hicks, he did not have a chance. You see, Gary, the penalty was the costly thing. This is what drives coaches crazy. There's George Burles. He's got the ball down at the one, two yard line with a first down, a holding penalty. Back they go. They put a blitz on here, and you can see the Michigan defense is really going after McAllister. He has no chance. That's Mark Messner, number 60 right there, along with Scarcelli, and absolutely no chance for McAllister, but the penalty is the key thing. Michigan State lost 26 yards in three plays, and now the field goal attempt, Chris Caudell, who's four of eight. This will be a 46-yard attempt. You can see his longest, 49. And Cardell missed it. He missed. And so with 7.46 to go in the first half, Michigan State loses a golden opportunity. Still trails 17 nothing and Minnesota Lou Holtz's team a 21 to 10 victory and this Minnesota football team a very big surprise this one started as Jim Harbaugh after a fumble by Michigan State hit Eric Caddis from nine yards out to make it seven to nothing and then a block punt Ed Hood pounced on it in the end zone it was 14 nothing Michigan then coming back to add the field goal. Mike Gillette from 29 yards out. And then Michigan State got to the one only to be penalized back and did not hit their attempt from 46 yards out, the field goal attempt. From the 29 now, first down for Jim Harbaugh. The blitz by Ramella. He got away. Complete to Jamie Morris. And Morris wrestling with Anthony Bell. Bell. Line of scrimmage to 35, second down. You talk about drive holders. That penalty a while ago. George Perlis must just be thinking about that one. Well, I'll tell you, Gary, I know exactly how he feels. I'd be really smoking right now because he got the ball for a touchdown, but you can't take it away from Michigan. What a defensive performance after they were really challenged, but that penalty helped second. him. Martin Stein. Hammerstein, I should say, was the guy that came storming through there that made the big play. Second down, a short five. Jamie Morris. He'll get maybe a yard, and it's going to come to a third down. It was Bell again, along with Phil Parker. You don't hold teams, Era, to a little over five points a game without having some big defensive plays. John Vitale, number 67, the right guard, which is on the left side of your screen, the down lineman from the center, will pull. They're trying to run off tackle, but he gets knocked off. He cannot get to the ball, and he is absolutely stuck. No chance there. I believe that was Jones that came in there. Third down, four yards to go. Coming through in a hurry, and he had to get rid of that one. Excellent pressure that time. John Jones, number 88, was in the face of Harbaugh. That's what I like about Harbaugh, though. He's seemingly always under control. See how smart he was. He got rid of that football. Wasn't going to take negative yardage. He picked up 10 yards on the play by just throwing it away. Good reactions on his part. Roddy Robbins will come in on fourth down to punt. Bobby Morris, State. Bobby Morris to receive it. Kicking into the wind, Gary. Oh, bother that one, did it? He smoked it. At the 14 is Morse. Morse is more of a putt catcher than a return man, even though he returned 187 yards a year ago. But the sure hands returns it just short of the 20. A 51-yard punt that time. Morse very slow getting up. Well, we mentioned a while ago Minnesota and Lou Holtz winning their football game in Iowa. Next week, they meet Michigan. They tied Wisconsin, you might recall, a year ago. Chuck Long is really a dangerous passer. He ended up in a tie last year in the Cotton Bowl. Did that happen two years in a row? <laughs> Good. I can't believe 52 points against Florida State. Florida wow. State's a very young football team. And, of course, Florida handing the balls their first loss. And Air Force 
Navy's hanging in there. Yes, they are. The Air Force had a big win last week against Notre Dame. Line of scrimmage just short of the 20. McAllister to Ingram, and boy, he got taken apart by Garland Rivers. That's the kind of pass that you could really hang your receiver up on. Michigan secondary covers a lot of ground when that ball's in the air. Once it's up there, boy, they really move to it. At halftime, you're going to see more highlights on the Provincial College Football Report. We'll have an interview with Jim Young of Army. They likewise are unbeaten. Jim Nance and Pat Hayden will have the scores and highlights. As we have six minutes left in this first half. McAllister in this football game is two of eight for 53 yards. And of course, the big one, the 50-yard completion. McAllister from the 20. Deflected and Ryzen almost had it on the deflection. It was Willie Boyer, 17, who had a chance at catching that football. He's still looking for his first catch of the year. This Michigan defense disguises their coverage so well. You see them appear to be in the, a two deep here with the corners up, but they'll roll into all kinds of things. Here they're rotating to the field. A corner on the right side is dropping back off, and the linebacker is sheltering him and the right uh, safety, free safety, was going to the field. They'll do a lot of things, but they hide their coverages exceptionally well. Just short of the 20, you see McAllister's efforts thus far. He's going to take off. And he'll be short of the first down, hit hard as he crossed the 15 by Mike Mallory. McAllister, the ball carrier. Bobby McAllister, thus far, is really in an uphill struggle. Well, you know, a week ago at this point, he was about six for six. Today, he's two for nine. You know, and I wondered which Michigan State offensive team was going to show up, the one that played last week or the one that played the week before that, where they were only averaging 220. That's why I thought Bo Schembechler would be in a dilemma, not knowing how quite the defense is football team. But this Michigan defense has really been outstanding thus far in the game. Montgomery to punt, but how would you like to start the game? A young quarterback and fumble the first snap. That really has to hurt. Montgomery hits it well. Campbell inside the 25. He's got the picket line, but the Michigan State reacts and comes over at the 31. 50-yard punt, 9-yard return, 4.55 left, and the third-ranked Wolverines getting the better of it. Starting to break through in an overcast day here, but it's been a long day thus far for Michigan State. The defense needs to come up with a turnover. They need to make a big play. Michigan 17, Michigan State nothing. Our ball to Gerald White, a flag on the play. Harbaugh completing the pass for an apparent first down, but let's see what the penalty's all about. Dean Al Labelli defending on the pass play. Whether well, there was anybody illegally downfield or not, he threw the flag late. We have an ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. Hey, Coach, you've had a few penalty flags. And you know what they're happening when they hit the field, don't you? You anticipated that one. No, that's, I couldn't think of anything else because I didn't see any bi other violation. Bo oh. didn't like it. Wait a minute, what's going on, he's saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, Michigan coming in here, you talked about this at the top of the broadcast, was a little concerned about their offensive line because of losing Hammerstein. And then Huzar, the other guard, not playing today, but they've really done a good job again. They've had a lot of problems on the interior. Mike Huzar is out. He should be back next week at uh, strong guard. And you can see the difference in the, the weight differential between the first game starters and today. Against Notre Dame, you see 274, now it's 255. And of course, coming in the guard spots, that's where it dropped off. Second down now after the penalty, second and 15. Harbaugh to Morris. And a 5 7 sophomore has a first down zipping out to the 44 yard line before Tim Moore and Phil Parker made the stop. Well, we're talking about the interior. Watch this little draw, a little delay draw. Morris comes over. Look at the blocking. Look at the hole in there. Beautiful job. Parker finally makes the play with help from Moore, but. 
Watch 79 to Michigan, which is Clay Miller. Drive the man clear across. That's why that hole is so large. He's getting help from Mike Krause, number 51. Jamie Morris, 11 carries, 48 yards. That was a 17-yard scamper to the 44. Here he goes again, and this time he's hit at the line and buried. Joe Curran was there first. Tim Moore followed. Moore a week ago had 19 tackles. Think about Moore. If you look at him, 5'7", what do they list him at? 175 pounds. You say, he can't play major college football, but he's tough. <laughs> They've got two guys out there, Jamie Morris and, of course, Eric Campbell, who they use at the flanker. They've been using Kolasar. Campbell's only 168 pounds, so there is a place for the little man in college football. They thought Jamie Morris would be a punt returner or a kickoff return man, and now they're starting tailback. Second down. Still 10 yards to go. Harbaugh in trouble. And he'll go down very wisely at the 49-yard line. Shane Bola was zeroing in along with Anthony Bell. This is one of the things that uh, George Purvis was concerned about, that Harbaugh would scramble out when they were zone or when they were man-to-man, -man, and they had sort of a spy guy on him, or a cop, as they call it, that just followed him and shadowed him. He was concerned. Now, this time, of course, Harbaugh is contained to about a three- or four-yard gain, but Michigan State was really concerned about this. They did a good job of recovering when Harbaugh tried, Harbaugh tried to throw a run the ball. Aaron, it's impressive to me how Bo has utilized Harbaugh. He's really taken his strengths and used them effectively. And one of the big differences in the 1984 and 85 Michigan team. Third down and five. Jokic has a first down catch. And he is a load to bring down at six foot eight. And Phil Parker Jokic. met him there and made the stop, but not until he made the first down catch. Well, there's Parker again at 5'11". Uh, He's got to defend the guy 6'8". Watch him crossing your screen right there. The ball, Parker comes up, makes a great hit. He is a tough football player. Jokic, as you pointed out, Gary, is a great target. And Bo told me one time, he says, he's not like a lot of basketball players. He says he has a thirst for the fray. <laughs> he's tough, man, a junior, and he'll be plaguing a lot of teams for this year and next. Here's Morris. And Morris advanced close to the 40-yard line. Mark Nichols, 83. Phil Parker made the stop. Right now, Michigan's got everything going for them. A lead, they're grinding the clock and running right at Michigan State. I would guess that Bo would like to get another score on that board if he can. He's got 215, 214. He's got three timeouts left. Second and six. Morris goes out. I think he threw a shoe. You might see a gadget somewhere along here. We'll try to get a big gainer. Second down and six. Gerald White, that'll be another first down. His forward progress to the 29 of Michigan State. David Wolf made the stop. 76,000 plus here in this 78th meeting between these interstate rivals, Michigan and Michigan State. And it's been all the Wolverines unbeaten coming in here. I'm Gary Bender along with the coach, Eric Parsegan. 13 yard pickup on that last play. And Michigan, well, both said it's been a lot of fun coaching this team. They've got great resolve, and they have just marched through the toughest non-conference schedule of any team in the country, and now looking for their second straight win in Big Ten play. And they look awesome today. Michigan's in field goal position now. A minute and a half to go in the first half. On a first down, Harbaugh and Kolasar. No, he's out of bounds. He tried to get the foot in bounds, could not. Dean Altabelli over to make the stop. He had two or three receivers open that time. The check through backs that went, that got in front of the linebackers, he could have hit several people. He had a lot of receivers open. Thus far, Harbaugh, 6 of 10, 62 yards, and of course he had that touchdown toss to start the game. Solazar will come out, and Eric Campbell replaces him. This would be a good time, Gary, for that little draw play with Jamie. Uh, because he's dangerous, it's a passing down. He gets into that secondary, although he's got White in there now. Gerald White's in there, I think. Second down and 10. Harbaugh, and this one is intercepted. The interception is made by Phil Parker. That 
is his third interception of the year, and you can see why he has been such an outstanding player. Well, the last time we saw Parker, he came up and supported an option play. Watch this time as he picks his pass off as he stepped right in front. There's Harbaugh. I think his judgment here probably, he probably didn't, did not see Parker. Parker came from the free safety position. Great job by Parker. That's why he's all Big Ten for two or three years. Eric Campbell was the intended receiver, and Bo is probably saying the same thing you just said. That was not good judgment, Jim. Yeah. yeah he would have liked to have gotten another score on there if he could. That for Harbaugh is his fourth interception of the season. McAllister. Hartenstein tripped him up, and he goes down. Number 66 is there again. He seems to be all over the place. Bobby McAllister, the ball carrier. Bo Jackson had another sensational day. And 59 points by Auburn. Wow. They lost that game against Tennessee, but they have come back into the picture now, haven't they? Wasn't it a couple years ago that that's those same, the same two teams played? It was like 46 to 45. You expect a lot of offense <laughs> right. with Florida State's in it, but Auburn 59, a Jim and Pat at halftime. We'll uh, be updating that, and of course, next week on CBS, we'll have that Georgia Tech Auburn game. McAllister rolling around on a second and ten. He's on target. Mark Ingram, that'll be a first down to the 35. 17 yards on the play. Jeff Akers made the stop. McAllister did a nice job. He's really being pressured by the Michigan defense. He doesn't have any time to throw. They flush him out of the pocket. He's trying to find receivers and avoid rushers. He did an excellent job that time of keeping his cool and poised and throwing that ball and making a completion. Michigan State called the timeout. They have one left. 31 seconds left in this first half. Watch here as Parker, as I've circled, comes all the way over and steps inside for the interception on Campbell, who turns in here. Let's take a look. Cardinals four, Dodgers two. You see Parker responds to the ball. Harbaugh throws, attempts to hit. Campbell right there. Look at Parker step right in front and pick that ball off. Great defensive work by Parker. On two Telestrator plays, you have shown why Phil Parker is such a good football player. Once on the run support and then with the interception. 31 seconds left to this first half from the 35 Michigan State. McAllister goes down, and guess who it is again, Eric? Boy, he is something. Hammerstein is really something. He came into this ball game with leading the team in sacks and total yards lost. He gives a little limp arm in there. He is really tough to block. That's 11 tackles for loss for Hammerstein. There's a pass to Morse. That only gets a couple of three yards. And with five seconds left now, four, the clock is stopped. Timeout, Michigan State. They have no timeouts remaining. Michigan State and Michigan, the two institutions that are represented here today. Let's visit them. At America's premier land-grant university, we've produced five Rhodes Scholars in four years and the nation's most widely used anti-cancer drug. We're the home of the nation's Institute for Research on Teaching and the national superconducting cyclotron. We're proud to be the pioneers of the land-grant commitment serving people. On the banks of the Red Cedar, Michigan State University, East Lansing. The University of Michigan is a very proud member of a very small set of institutions called Research Universities, combining distinguished scholarship, education, advanced research training, and professional training in a way that is distinctly American. of Michigan, a heritage of leadership. Gary Bender along with the coach, Eric Parsegan, 17-0 with four seconds left. The last play of the first half. Michigan State, going to need a miracle. They're going to have what you call the trips formation. Three men split to the near side of the field. And they're just going to crank it up and hope somebody runs under people back from Michigan. That's Tony Gant. And I think
think he could decide whether he won the interception or not. And so that is the end of our first half. And Bo Schindler, Michigan Wolverines lead it 17 to nothing. We'll return after this commercial break. And a word from your local station. You got to move? You're thinking about a move. You are moving. Rider moving days are here with special rates on rider trucks at rider dealers everywhere. The newest, best trucks you can rent with power steering, automatic transmissions, radios, air... Michigan State. And this block kick was really hurt Michigan State. Watch here. This is Larson, the up back. He's supposed to block the most dangerous man. Dieter Haran breaks through right here. Larson will bypass him and go to the next man coming from the far side. And Dieter Haran continues on, blocks the kick, and they go on down. Let's take a look. You see Dieter Haran come through. Larson goes right on by. And Dieter Haran is clear to block the kick. Costly error for the Michigan State Spartans. Heron with the block, Ed Hood came up with the fumble recovery for the touchdown. Bobby McAllister mishandled that first snap, and he's been fighting uphill all game long. You know, you come in, he came into this ball game off of a great game against Iowa, and, you know, completing all the passes and all the yardage, and then all of a sudden he fumbles the first uh, exchange, they lose the ball, and it's 16-yard drive by Michigan. Tough on him. Lorenzo White had 226 yards last week, but really when you're not throwing the ball well, it just puts more pressure on White. Well, this tells you a little something about the Michigan defense. Very, very tough. All right, you're George Perlis. You're down 17 nothing. What are you going to tell your team to do? I'm going to tell my team, look, Michigan only drove 16 yards and a block kick for two, two scores, 14 points. The score should be three to nothing. We can come back. You've got to come in there psychologically and inspire them because the mistakes really hurt them. All right, we'll be back with the start of the second half. Michigan with a 17 to nothing lead over the Spartans of Michigan State. 17 to nothing intermission lead as we're just about ready to start the second half. Harry, you look at the stats and you really, you, it doesn't tell this football game, really, does it? Well, it tells those mistakes that we talked about. And again, if I was George per Perlis, I'd say, hey, guys, look at here. They only made 132 yards on us. We can get back in this game. We can't make any errors. We've got to capture some of the breaks and get back into it. And look how much time they've had the football. That surprises me, over 16 minutes. Now, they've played an excellent football game other than those key things that we've talked about. Uh, you understand why coaches go buggy. Now, you ought to know your dad, coach. He right. touch all those things. You know that Bo's team is not going to let up, and I'm sure that was the thought at halftime <laughs> for his team. Well, that's the other problem for the Michigan State Spartans. Look at the scoring here. 63 to 3 in the second half. Bo's ready to go here. You know they haven't been scored on in the fourth quarter. And so next week we're going to have some Big Ten action. Ohio State and they were rolling today without Keith Byers. They'll play Purdue and Purdue is averaging an amazing number of yards of passing. And here is the game that's shaping up to stop the world for a while. They're going to watch this one. Iowa, Michigan, number one and number three. And then Auburn, you'll get a chance to see Bo Jackson, who had a sensational day today against Bill Curry's Georgia Tech team up big double header. Montgomery kicking off for Michigan State. Kolasar will go back, and he won't bring it out. Well, we talked about how McAllister was struggling in the first half, and here's what Jim Harbaugh was able to do. Well, you can see the McAllister's not having a great afternoon, but I think you have to face the fact that you're going Good against again. The number four defensive team in the nation, the number one team in the country, preventing scores. So, and the, they didn't get into those statistics without having a great ball club. Then you start the game fumbling a snap from center and get a block punt to add on to that. It's tough enough to beat these guys without that kind of problem. Right. From the 20 now, the Wolverines will have the football. Jamie Morris and Gerald White in the backfield. Jokic to the near side of the field. Gerald White, the fullback. Nothing doing on that play. Joe Curran, 94, who may be the strongest player on this Michigan State team, underneath all that pile. There'll be virtually no gain on the play. You know, another thing that George Perla said that he wanted to do is that the 
Well, I mean, the Wolverines do not like to have their strong guard covered. They like to pull in. They like to up and through uh, on linebackers. And he decided that he would cover them. In other words, keep a man over their strong, uh, the Michigan strong guard. And they've done a good job of it. They have kept the uh, Wolverines from being consistent on the inside. Just some of the little things that they get ready for each week. Second down, almost 10 to go. Our ball with pressure from Kelly Quinn steps up. And that'll be off target. Colazar, the intended receiver, but Kelly Quinn messed that one up. Kelly Quinn has messed up a lot of quarterbacks so quick. I thought for a minute that Harbaugh was going to take off with the ball, the one thing that the Spartans fear, but he saw an open receiver in Colsar, but he threw the ball behind him, and Colsar slipped, could not come back for the ball. There's Kelly Quinn out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Last year, he led the Big Ten in tackles for losses. And it'll bring up third down, almost 10 yards to go. Campbell will be split to the near side. Jokic to the top of the field. Third down, nine. And he's throwing it up. Takatis broken up. Over the back was Rowe. Ron Rowe, also Phil Parker defending on the play. And Michigan's going to have to punt the football. Well, Harbaugh was lucky to get that ball off. There he goes right back into the pocket here, and he knows that he's going to get hit. He feels the pressure coming from the right side. He just puts the ball up in the air, hopeful that Caddis will jump up and take it away from the defenders. But number 18, who is Ron Rowe, jumps up over Caddis' shoulder and knocks the ball down, does an excellent job. Here it is again. Look at the shot that he takes right there. I think that was Moore. That's who it was, Tim Moore. You're right. The putt by Marty Robbins. Good rush put on. Bobby Morris calling for the fair catch. Runs a long ways to make it. He has it at the 38-yard line. 40-yard punt. We're at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan for this intra-state battle for the 78th time between Michigan and Michigan State. Has the Michigan Wolverines leading 17 to nothing. And now the Dodgers had their 2-0 lead cut today as the Cardinals defeated the Dodgers in St. Louis 4-2. It was a game that started off in an opposite direction for Michigan State. They fumbled the first snap. Michigan took it in for the touchdown, then a block punt, and all of a sudden it's 14-0, and the green and white's been battling upfield. Here's Lorenzo White. We had 48 yards in the first half and just no place to go. Boy, I had to be impressed with the pursuit of the Michigan team. It appeared that White might be able to make it to the corner. As you look here, they've got three Final blockers out in front. He pitches the ball out. It looked from this vantage point that he had the corner with two blockers out in front. Watch the pursuit from the inside. It forces White to stop to try to cut back, and here comes the rest of the Wolverines. There's about six or seven of them there. In particular, Jeff Akers and Doug Mallory. Second down, 11 yards to go. Callister will take off on this one. He has some running room. Spun around and very good second effort. About a yard short of the first down at the 49. Tony Gant made the stop. It's going to be third down and one for Michigan State. Garcelli. Well, we'll update you on what has transpired thus far. It all began after a fumble recovery on a touchdown pass from Jim Harbaugh to tight end Eric Caddis. 7-0. Then the block punt by Dieter Heron. Ed Hood pounced on it. 14-0. And Mike Gillette added a 29-yard field goal in the second quarter. 17-0. And that's where we are. So we brought you up to snuff in this game. And on third and one, they stuff it. Andy Moeller was first there. And Michigan State has a fourth down. What a defense that is. I can't believe it. He had no chance whatsoever to make that first down. Lost two or three yards. How would you like to be white right here running the football? They got a man right in your face, Moeller. Three others coming in. They were really an outstanding defensive football team. Eric, thus far in this game, Michigan State is one of nine on third down conversions. Well, I'll tell you, that speaks well of a Michigan uh, defensive unit. Montgomery. Oh, nice oh. snap. Good thing he's a tall guy at 6'3". He got that one underway. Campbell, fair catch at the 12-yard line. So Michigan will have it there. 40-yard punt by Montgomery. 
11.53 to go in this battle. Two schools 65 miles apart. Gary Moeller wants to create a flat line along the defensive front. Watch those linebackers step in there to create that line and no bubble in there. Take a look. All right, Coach, I'm going to ask the question. What do you mean by a bubble? A bubble, an area where the back can pick daylight. You can see there you've got a flat line across there with no one being back and no bubble available for white to find. And that really does a lot of things. One thing it does there, it takes that cutback away. Yes, no cutbacks. And absolutely, the linebackers, instead of dropping out or flowing with the play, they fill into those areas that are void. The coach's clinic here by the coach. First down now from the 12 for the Michigan Wolverines. Jamie Morris out to the 15, and he'll be dropped there just across the 15-yard line. Morris. Anthony Bell and Phil Parker, who has a lot of tackles in this game. They can say pretty much the same thing about the Michigan defense. They flowed very well to that pitch. Bo's got to play in there. I don't know what he wants to do with second down and about five or six. He doesn't want to take any high-risk plays, I don't believe, because he's got a 17 to nothing lead. Historically, this is the Second. way his teams play. They like to get ahead of you and then just kind of lock it away. Second down, six. Harbaugh to Bob Perryman, the fullback, rammed out of bounds at the 21, and it looks like a little short of the first down. Dean Aldebelli over there. It's going to be third down a yard to go. That was a very safe pass as you'll watch the lead blockers. Both you see Jamie Morris as well as Perryman, 37 lead. Now he's got plenty of time. He's getting pressure from the backside, but it's far enough away. Very safe pass. Right there, he hits Perryman, the fullback. Good call by Michigan because it was a very safe play. Harbaugh would have either run the ball or thrown it out of bounds. He's not going to take any chances. Perlis third year in a five-year rebuilding program. It was stopped dead still early in this game, but they haven't given up yet. They're still scratching and clawing. Third in the yard, and that's going to be stopped for no gain. Mark Nichols, 83, a sophomore out of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, who they think has outstanding credentials. He's just been hurt all the time. And Michigan State has reciprocated what our good friends from Michigan <laughs> did just a moment ago to Michigan State. Now they're going to force a punt. Watch Mark Nichols, number 83, get penetration. He's at the lower part right there, splits the seam. He's into the secondary. Good job. Same type of thing Moeller did to Michigan State. Boy, that is Big Ten football, isn't it? Right in the trenches, stuffing a play. The rush put on Monty Robbins. He hit a beauty. Bobby Morris will gauge it and come up with it at the 40-yard line. 17-0, 39-yard punt. Michigan State looking to get on the scoreboard. Now, because they lead it, 17 to nothing, And Michigan State needs a big play. They need it from Bobby McAllister. His one moment was a 50-yard strike to Mark Ingram. He might be looking for him now. From the 40, first down for the Spartans. Horse in motion. Here's the end around. To Ryzen, and that did not fool anybody, and in particular, Mark Messner. You don't, you just don't run reverses against a team like Michigan. They absolutely contain. They have one man assigned to it. It's very difficult. They try to run the reverse here, a little handoff inside. I mean, faking the ball to White, slipping it out here, and here's your contained people. No way. That's Mark Messner right there on top of it. You almost get the feeling Bo loves to have you try wrinkles. Well, they're trying. You know, Michigan State is doing the right thing. They're trying to make something happen. You know, they got to get back into the ball game. That's an 11-yard loss. Second and 21. Lorenzo White. And he runs in to Michigan State. He just absolutely had no running room. Scarcelli was standing there. You know, Scarcelli, a year ago, was brilliant. He had in that football game seven tackles, two for a loss, and a sack, and playing strong here. Well, it didn't end up in a tie, did it? Oklahoma, unbeaten. Pittsburgh playing well the last two weeks. Temple and Rutgers. Harvard. And Clemson defeating Virginia. That's an upset. 17-0. Nine minutes to go, third quarter. Third down and 22. They need a big one. Akers chasing McAllister. 
And he'll get out of bounds at the 30, and everyone was covered. I looked down the field area. There was absolutely nobody open on this play. Well, it really makes it tough on McAllister. He can't find anybody open. He's a little frustrated right now. He's doing the best job he possibly can, but he's facing one whale of a defense. I would guess that one of the biggest differences between this game, Iowa, and Michigan is the secondary. Michigan's secondary is outstanding. Not to say that Iowa isn't, but this may be as good as any collectively in the country. We're going to find out all about That's that next right. week. <laughs> you could tell me and call me who's best. Will you do that? <laughs> right. No snap. Montgomery got it off. Boy, he has been hairy back there, hasn't he? Gets a good bounce. Campbell to 15. Look at this. And an excellent return by Eric Campbell. Horky's forward progress at the 33. 54-yard punt, a 20-yard return. Again tomorrow, an NFL doubleheader on CBS. The Giants against the Bengals in the first game. And then what a rematch this is going to be in the NFC Championship game. The Bears off to a brilliant start, traveling to San Francisco. It's a game they lost last year in that playoff. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL Today, right here on CBS. She's smiling, but I don't think a lot of Michigan State fans are. He was smiling earlier. I, uh, he's kind of in the driver's seat right now. Uh, he likes the 1985 season. From the 33, first down for Bo Beckler's team. A give to Thomas Wilcher. It's the first time we've seen him in the game. Wilcher, an outstanding track man for Michigan. Explosive carrier. Dances the ball out to the 38-yard line. Phil Parker. And that guy's been called all afternoon long. Phil Parker, along with Todd Crum on the stop. Second down, five, almost six yards to go. Wilcher's had 43 carries thus far, 223 yards. He's averaging 5.2. He's really come on his own this year. He's the guy, a track man, becoming a football player. He's a hurdler and one of the best in the country. Our ball on the fake handoff. On target to Caddis, first down to the 50. Dean Alcabelli over to make the stop. Good ball handling that time by Harbaugh, 12-yard pickup. Also a very fine throw. He drilled that ball. He had, you know, a couple times he's, throw, he's thrown the ball, and he has had a little air under it, and they were able to respond to it. But that time, he really hummed it in there. You see the time left in the third quarter. 17 to nothing. That's the way it stood at halftime. Changes now. Jokic comes out. Coltisars come in at wideout. First down from the 50. Bob Perryman, the fullback. He's lost his starting job this year to Gerald White, but they really have outstanding depth. They can interchange either one of those guys. Well, Ohio State stopped Indiana's winning streak, and they won that ball game without Keith Byers. Now, we'll have Ohio State and Purdue next week, and possibly Byers will be ready by then. Doesn't look, doesn't it appear as if they needed him. <laughs> well, Indiana was off yeah. to their best start in 18 years yeah. under Bill Mallory. They ran into a juggernaut today. Second down, four yards. second. I don't think Perryman was ready for that. Looked like an afterthought by Harbaugh. Yeah. I thought he was going to take off with the ball that time, Gary. It looked like he had a seam in there, and he decided at the last minute to, to release it. I think Perryman thought the same thing. <laughs> I think so. This game last year, as you look at George Perlis, was where Harbaugh broke his arm. Yes. And at that time, the season started to get away from Bo Beckler. And uh, Michigan was 3-1 and one in that time that Harbaugh got hurt. Bo's got to be happy with what's going on. They had beaten Miami of Florida, but then disaster hit after that because they didn't have uh, an offense to move the ball with any effectiveness. Looks like maybe a little draw play here. How about a draw? All right, let's see if he called it. Third and four. Nope. Yep, yep. <laughs> Flag on the play. Harbaugh has the first down. It was just a little more delayed, that's all. <laughs> A flag down. I don't know who it's on here. I tell you, Coach, you've been uncanny this year for calling plays before the snap. And you were right there. It just took a little longer to vindicate <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> So the penalty flag, what's it about? We have a hole on the defense. Well, that's unusual. Yeah. On a running play. 
Well, they'll just take the ball with the first down right there, I would think. You look through the years, and you used to see a lot of this. Michigan always had quarterbacks, Steve Smith and Rick Leach. They could take off like that and run. And there was another example of it, Purdue leading Illinois. And Illinois, of course, last week was a big surprise. And we'll have Purdue against Ohio State. The we'll start of our doubleheader next Saturday. And in two weeks, Minnesota will go against Ohio State. You don't think they will be ready for him in the Metrodome? Oh, that doesn't surprise me. Wisconsin always plays Iowa tough. They tied them last year. Lou Holtz has done quite a job up at Minnesota. Ricky Foggy, his quarterback, last week was 7 of 7. First down, just inside the 25. Perryman, and reaction is very effective that time by Michigan State. You can see Nichols jumping around and celebrating. Mark Nichols got a lot of penetration. It appeared to me that they were, Michigan was trying to trap it, but Nichols just closed down very quickly. Let's see if we can see how it happened here. You see number 83 just, oh, he slips the center's block right there. Beautiful job. Tabacino tried to block back to the right, but he slipped the block and was right in there on the play. Era, what you're really seeing is a Pittsburgh Steeler defense. That's what George Perlis had and brought with him to Michigan State. Right, they angle that tackle in there, make it very difficult. They do a lot of twisting and stunning in there. It's tough to get anything consistent going on the inside and off tackle. Second down, 11. Harbaugh to Perryman. Perryman to the 15 and inside the 15 and very close to the first down. It showed a lot of poise there on the part of Harbaugh. That will be a first down. Shows you the versatility of those fullbacks, Perryman and White. They're not afraid to throw to them. You know, both of them were tailbacks converted to fullback. And uh, Boas will interchange those people. They can play either position. At the 5.30 mark, Michigan's on the move, trying to build their 17-0 advantage. Coming out is Wiltshire, also coming out is Eric Campbell. Colasar is in, along with Yokis at the Whiteouts. Line of scrimmage, the 14. Harbaugh, a reverse pivot. Nice catch by Morris. To the 10, 5, and grounded at the 4. That showed very good hands by Morris. That could have been a disaster. It really was because Harbaugh was for forced to deal the ball off very quickly on that option play, and he almost threw it off of Jamie, over Jamie Morris's head. Nice job by Morris. He has huge hands, and that's one of the reasons he's able to hang on. Air Force is on the move. The Falcons in that Pentagon game with a big lead, and Georgia Tech beating Western Carolina, and... Georgia Tech will meet Auburn, and that game will be on CBS. Second down, two yards to go. Harbaugh gets a block. Broken up. And intercepted. Crumb on the deflection with the interception. That ball touched at least three people. <laughs> really is a surprising call. I sat here and just thought that Bo was going to grind it in with two yards to go. Well, that obviously keeps Michigan State in it. Well, we were just talking about how well Harbaugh was doing, and then something like this happens. You can see Bo Schimbeck are talking to him about it. Second down and two yards to go, ready to thump it in there. That's the third interception for Todd Crum, and Bo does not like turnovers. Nobody does, but he might even hate him worse. Michigan with three in this game. This is Craig Johnson who's come into the game, replacing Lorenzo White, and he bends and weaves his way across the 25 to the 27. Let's go back see how many people touched this last pass. I'm a little surprised with this. We're second down and two. It's just a sprint out on the part of Harbaugh. Get a lot of pressure on him. It's Bell, number 51. The ball goes right through Perriman's hands. Might have, been, might have been a little bit high. And you can see Crum make the interception. That just isn't characteristic of Bo, is it? It really isn't. I'm really surprised that uh, they would throw the ball down there. 
Crum, who's an outstanding baseball player, hit over 300 for the Spartans with his third interception of the year. Second down, three, penalty flag, the pass is complete to Craig Johnson. First down, but you are indicating, Coach, that it may come back. Well, if referee threw the flag, you got to guess it's holding on the part of Michigan State. I've got a hold on the offense. Yep. Boy, that goes back to that holding call they had when they headed the one-yard line where they self-destructed. That was really a, a tough call on it. Here is Perlis. Wondering about what the call was. Doesn't like it. They get a little something going, something happened, boom, they go backwards. That's, again, inexperienced sometimes on a football team, and this is a very young Michigan State team. It is a young team. And, uh, but everybody thought that maybe they had turned the corner last week, Gary, with that tremendous performance that they put on against Holy Iowa. But now, there's Bo. I think he likes that negative yardage. I think he's got to be awful proud of that defensive unit. He really loves this football team. You can see why. Second down, 13 after the penalty. A delayed handoff to Craig Johnson. And Johnson will move it back to the 20-yard line. They're back to the original line of scrimmage. Jim Harbaugh, I'm sure, felt the displeasure of Bo Beckler a while ago on that interception. But you know what? Knowing Bo the way he is, he knows exactly how to handle his quarterback. Well, he's, he's been around a long time, and he's won a lot of football games. He knows what he's doing. That's why I said at the top of the show, one of the reasons I picked him is because of his record. His track record is impressive. Third down, and thus far, Michigan State is one of ten on third downs. The blitz. He got it off, but that'll be short of the first down. Bobby Morse caught the ball, but he was caught instantaneously by Andy Moeller and Ivan Hicks. So it's fourth down. And again, McAllister, as you see right there, had no time to throw the ball. He had to get rid of it right now. Wasn't able to get the necessary yardage for the first down. Montgomery back to punt again. Campbell will receive it. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. 17 to nothing, Michigan. Oh, oh he kicked this, this way over Campbell's head. He had earlier this year a 66-yarder against Arizona State. This one is 75 yards. Montgomery, I think he better check for helium in the football. Five-yard putt. He has Michigan backed up at the 20-yard line. The NBA series will be returning again here on CBS. The debut of Patrick Ewing and the New York Knicks, and I know you enjoy as much as I do, following the NBA on CBS. And ain't underway. 2.15 left in this third quarter. Jamie Morris for the 20, spins for a couple of yards. It'll bring up second down and eight. Michigan State hanging in there. They have shut Michigan off the scoreboard of the second half, still waiting for something to happen. They need the big play. Just think about the field position change. Michigan was down to the six-yard line, second down and two, ready to go in, and with that great punt, they're backed up now on their own 21-yard line. So punting game and the kicking game is very important. Line of scrimmage now at the 22, second down eight. That punt, by the way, tied a Michigan State record. Ray Stakowicz. Against Notre Dame at 78, also punted the ball 75 yards. The blitz. He got it off to Caddis. Caddis has a first down, and Harbaugh was hit by John Jones. And showed a real presence of mind that time to deliver the pass for 14 yards. That was excellent work by Harbaugh. He gets this ball away just in time. Caddis slow blocks, number 81 here and then checks through. Jones right there hits Harbaugh just as he throws the ball. Good throw. Well-executed play by Harbaugh because he was ready to get knocked down for about 10 yards. Watch Harbaugh. He knows the trouble is coming. John Jones rifles in, knocks him down, but he is the veteran now. He delivered it, and he got 14 yards, and now he wants a timeout. Michigan asking for a timeout, timeout. with 1-0-9. And Bo says, why? Why do we have a timeout? Hey, I don't want that timeout. He got it. It's 17-0 Michigan. Michigan State, Illinois. 
here at Spartan Stadium. Back by John Jones, pouring in on Jim Harbaugh. There was a man that played for Michigan State so many years, played on a national championship team for Michigan State, and his name was Bubba Smith. Bubba Smith, who is well known now for television commercials and also his acting ability, was absolutely a terror for the Spartans. And this man, who could chase you down from behind and who could deliver a blow that was unsurpassed by anybody in the game, played with an outstanding combination of George Webster as they went to the national championship of 1965. And there he is today, a very familiar actor now throughout the country. And he knocked out my quarterback here in 1966 in the first quarter. Very hand ready. Uh, very hand ready, exactly. Boy, what a football team that was because they had Webster, who was the all-time player on it, Bubba Smith. And he's lucky, too, if he's listening somewhere along the line. I'll tell him right now that, Bubba, we would have beaten you by 21 points. There he is, the governor of Michigan. That is James J. Blanchard. His first lady is Paula Sun J. with him, and he is a Michigan State graduate. So it's not been the kind of afternoon that he'd like to have. There he is, the Honorable Governor of Michigan. This game, they play for the Paul Bunyan Governor of Michigan Trophy. I'm rooting for Michigan State. I'm proud to be Governor of a state with both the University of Michigan. You can see what I have to do. <laughs> hey, look, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to root for Michigan. That's right. <laughs> That's what we need. It divides family and friends, doesn't it, here? <laughs> this rivalry. He made no bones about it who he's rooting for, but... What an outstanding day this is for the Great Lakes State. 16 seconds left now in the third quarter. Jamie Morris on a second down and seven has a first down. Knocked out of bounds at the 49 of Michigan State. Ron Rowe over there to make the stop. One of the very few times that they've been able to get outside the leverage of the contain. We have a man shaken up for Michigan State. That's a 12-yard gain on the play. Injured player, 57. That is... Uh, Jim Ranella for Michigan State, and he is the smallest player defensively in the line of the Big Ten. He's only 5'9", a 210-pounder. And uh, they'll look him over. Morris with that uh, game now has 80 yards on 18 carries. Very popular player, Jim Ranella. He was a walk-on and uh, has really contributed to George Perlis's program. Next week now, let's look ahead, and I know you're going to look forward to this doubleheader. It starts with Ohio State and Purdue in Columbia defense. But with Harbaugh now, they've got another side of the picture to throw at Iowa. There's the two interceptions. And that one he'd really like to have back that went into the end zone. First down now, 49 of Michigan State. Jamie Morris. And Morris skips to the 45. Looks like he threw a shoe, didn't he? We have come to the end of the third quarter. Michigan 17, Michigan State nothing. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. In lead, they have a second down at six at the 45 of Michigan State. Jim Harbaugh being chased by Quinn, and he's going to be dropped for a loss all the way back to the 40. That's Tim Moore, number 42, out of nearby St. John's, Michigan. You know, you're trailing 17 to nothing, and then you find the stat that Michigan hasn't given up a point in the fourth quarter. That's not encouraging for Michigan State. It's very unlikely that they will. I mean, they're an intimidating defense, and if I was McAllister, I, I don't know where I would go. Even Johnson, when he came in for Lorenzo White, he couldn't find any daylight. This is a remarkable defensive football team, a good game plan, and I can see why Michigan State is having their problems moving the ball. They need some help from their defensive unit to try to get the ball back. So that loss brings up a third down and 20. Jokic and Kolazar come in at wideouts behind Jim Harbaugh. Lots of time. Jokic, that's a yard short of the first down at the 40. At six foot eight, he went down pretty well, didn't he, to get to that football? Really a good effort on the part of Jokic that time. We'll see him just come right straight up the field. Then he turns into the seam, clear in the middle. The ball is thrown slightly behind him, and his feet come out from under him. Watch here as he turns and makes a great catch. Right there. Excellent piece of work by Jokic. I want to tell you, those ground-level shots like that one you just saw is just an outstanding piece of camera work. Paul Sherwood, Skip Shackelford, and company. Mark, I tell you, we've really had some outstanding camera work, and there's an example of it. 
Again, with fourth down, both taking no chances. Fourth and very short. Going to try to dump the ball in here. Oh, he's kicked it into the end zone. Yes, he has. Marty Robbins, way too much on it. Bo was saying yesterday he had a tough time First teaching him the little pooch kick or the little bunt, bunt punt. The bunt punt, the pooch kick, or yeah, whatever. Right. The NFL Today, Herb Cross will be live in San Francisco, and John Brody, the ex-49er quarterback, will be a special guest, and then Whitey Herzog and Tom Lasorda. Well, that'll be a pair, won't it, in there? They'll be live, and then the doubleheaders, the Giants and Bengals, the Lions and Redskins, and the game we're really looking for, forward to watching the Bears and 49ers, a rematch of that NFC title game a year ago. How about Bump Phillips? He's got the Saints playing a lot better. He does. I saw him out there a couple of weeks ago when they beat San Francisco. From the 20 now, first down after that punt sailed into the end zone. Callister pitching to Lorenzo White. And White gets a couple of yards, and I would think they've got to be looking more up the field. They've got to get something big happening as we have 13 minutes left in the game. Scarcelli came right off of a block. White was trying to turn it to the outside. But the defense just, it seems as if Michigan has 11 men wherever the ball is. Is that something? <laughs> of course, they've only given up 21 points. One touchdown, and that was last week against Wisconsin. Lenzo White coming in here, it had six straight 100-yard days. He's going to really have to go to get it today. McAllister. Look out, and he has roll at the 25, and Cochran came up and fell to him. It looked like for a moment Cochran was making a move to go for the interception. I'll tell you, it isn't worth gaining two yards on that kind of a pass for the shot that he took that time. Oh. Woo. Watch here as Brad Cochran, number 30, comes in. Right there is the pass completion for about two yards. Watch Cochran. Oh. Bang! I mean, you know, 215-pounder that can really run. Line of scrimmage, the 25, third down. Five yards to go. Gallister is in trouble. That's an understatement. Uh-oh, guys to get rid of it. And he did. He pulled it off. Yes, he did. I thought for a minute that he was going to call grounding to the ball. He absolutely had no chance on this play. It was like the whole side of the line was coming after him. McAllister setting up here. He looks, and all of a sudden he looks up, and Jeff Akers is there. Here comes Scarcelli, number 85, and that is absolutely running for your life. <laughs> he's, had, he's had a tough afternoon. I feel sorry for McAllister and Lorenzo White. This guy has had an outstanding day. Look at that average. He's been punting the ball well all year long. He's into the window this time. Doesn't hurt him very much, though, does it? No, it doesn't. Campbell going back at the 25. Big block over there. And he'll be dropped at the 35. 50-yard punt, a 9-yard return. The Wolverines, they lead it. 135 at Spartan Stadium for this renewal of a family feud, a war that's been going on since 1898. And Bobby McAllister of Michigan State has really been struggling today, as has this entire Michigan State offense. The running backs, White, who we said had six straight 100-yard days, 47. Morris, on the other hand, very effective, 84 yards. But you got to remember, Michigan's only been giving up 110 yards rushing a game. Harbaugh gives up to Wiltshire this time. And Wiltshire out to the 39. Let's update some of the activity going on today. Let's go to Jim Nance. Well, Gary, you know, the Wolverines rank third in the country. Next week, they'll go against number one, Iowa. The Hawkeyes hold off Wisconsin today, 23 to 13. Other finals in the top 10, number two, Oklahoma, 14 to seven over Texas. Longhorns had 70 yards of total offense. And it was uh, Auburn, 59 to 27 over number four, Florida State. Tennessee lost their first game of the year. Let's get back to Gary and Eric. Jim, thank you very much. It's now a second down and five for Michigan. Wiltshire again, and Wiltshire will be short of the first down. Harry, we saw that Iowa score. They won in Wiltshire Madison. Let's update the progress of a man buying for the Heisman, Chuck Long. Got another great day with 18 completions, and he'll be the guy that uh, be challenging this Wolverine defense next week. 
he's a great one. We've seen him two or three times in the last couple of years. I think he's an outstanding football player. Boy, Bo Jackson had a great game. Long, solid today. Robbie Bosco, that race is going to be torrid before it's all over. Still early, though. We're just in midseason. Third down and two now for Michigan. 10-15 to go in the game. Colas are in motion. Harbaugh to Wiltshire again, and he's very close to the first down. Wiltshire's like a jet when he hits up there. That's some of that track ability, and he did get the first down for Michigan. It's like somebody beat his helm up, up a little bit. <laughs> he's continuing on. That's depth when you got Wiltshire and Morris, and you got Perryman, and you can come back with a White who can play both a tailback and a fullback spot. be the Michigan section. They're, they're grinning from ear to ear. First down now for the Wolverines. Tom Perryman, and on a first down, he able to move the pile a couple of yards up the field. Moore and Curran on the stop. and the tackle. All right, we checked up on Bo Jackson. Our group is now going to give us an update on Robbie Bosco. And there we are in the third quarter, 14-0. He ran for one and threw for the other one. So there's our Heisman update. Bo Jackson, Chuck Clogg, and Robbie Bosco. You had to vote today to be tough, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. I don't know who I'd vote for. Second down, seven. There's a reverse pivot and goes nowhere. That's quite a play defensively. Give credit to John Jones. He's been a big play performer for him. You look at this game in retrospect, you take away that fumble early and the block punt. Of course, that's a lot. Michigan State has held it very well. They played very well defensively other than that. You're exactly right, Gary. They have played a very fine football game. The difference were those errors that uh, they made in the first quarter and 14 points, this should be a three to nothing game. Bobby McAllister has not been able to generate the offense. He did have one 50 yard completion to Ingram, but in all fairness, he's been running for his life. Third down, 11. Jokic. Jokic for the first down. Catch. He'll move it to the 43. Ron Rowe defending on the play. The ball was thrown low again to Jokic. Had to pick, try to pick up a first down. Want to keep possession of the ball as long as Bo can. Grind that clock down. I'm surprised Bo is throwing. Is this just kind of tuning up for Iowa next week? Well, you could see that that was about as safe as you can get. Six foot eight on the sideline. And he did throw the ball low, but I'll guarantee you Harbaugh would have thrown the ball out of bounds had the receiver not been open. He's 12 and 21, 135 yards. First down at the 43. Wilcher. And he is pumping those legs very close to the first down. Phil Parker, Dean Altabelli made the stop. And I would think maybe this Michigan State defense is getting a little bit tired. Freshman from Pompano Beach, Florida. He came in, passed for 275 yards last week. He probably thought, hey, this game isn't so tough. <laughs> then he comes in here and he finds out there's some improvement that has to be made. Here's a big play performer, Ryzen. If they can get the football back, they're going to have to go to a Ryzen or an Ingram or somebody to get on the scoreboard. The problem is protecting Gallister. Wiltshire again on a second and one. They bend him backwards. Let's see if he got the first down. That's Nichols and Bell to get on the stop. Yeah, I'm impressed with Michigan State also. They're hanging in there, boy. They were really in there hitting that time. Make it tough for you to go. 6.54 left. There's George Perlis. I know the feeling on the sideline. Feel frustrated. The offense has not been able to move the ball. You've contributed to your own demise with the errors that you've made. Hey, you were in very many situations like this. I don't remember you getting uh, beat very often. Gary, you forgot that I coached at Northwestern. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you had Bo with you on the staff one time at Northwestern. That's right. He was on the staff when we had a disastrous year. We had one of the great staffs in the world. Bo will tell you about that. But he left me. He was smart. <laughs> he went to Ohio State, and then you beat him then, right? <laughs> yeah, right. That we did. <laughs> Anyway, Coach, you didn't get very many of these situations. Don't give me that. I was in them, though. 
first down. Wiltshire trying to sweep, and he lost his footing and got back to the line of scrimmage. Ron Rowe was there to make sure he didn't go any farther. Wiltshire tackled by Rowe. Well, that uh, Northwestern staff was quite a staff you had. We had a great staff there, you know, and we didn't win. Of course, it's a very difficult job. Uh, Michigan State being a private school. Look at the statistic here. You can see the Michigan, the dominance of this Michigan defense. 16 yards in this half, Gary. I mean, you know, that's got to be frustrating to all the offensive teams at Michigan State. Yet Michigan State's defense, I think, has been valiant in this first, well, it's, the game's got 5.58 left to go. I think they've done a remarkable job. No first downs by Michigan State in the second half. Second down, virtually 10 yards to go. Harbaugh pulls it out. Caddis, and it's intercepted. Dean Altabelli comes up with it. The Rhodes Scholar candidate from Escanaba, Michigan. They call him an overachiever, brilliantly smart in that secondary, and he made a very fine play. He stepped in there for injured Paul Bobbitt, who was a strong safety and has played exceptionally well today. There it is again. Now watch out to Belly, number 13 downfield is Harbaugh drops the ball, but he throws the ball a little bit underthrown here. Again, great field position, or I should say ball reaction by Altabelli. And so Harbaugh has suffered his third interception. Did not throw this ball well, but you've got to give a lot of credit to number 13. In the country next week, you've got to cut down on interceptions. You can see that Harbaugh's had three interceptions in this game, and next week against Iowa, that would be very tough to overcome. Well, that play didn't develop at all. Ryzen and uh, McAllister were not on the same page. As an end result, it's going to bring up second down. Another problem. Get Ryzen out there and let him run in the open field. Well, Oklahoma held Texas. What do we hear? 70 yards in offense. And Florida handing the balls their first loss. And Auburn and Bo Jackson, 59 points. And Jim Nance and Pat Hayden. We'll be joining them with scores and highlights at the conclusion of this game. It has five and a half left in it. Second down, ten. On a delay handoff to Craig Johnson. He fumbled. And Michigan's got it. Trying to draw play. Johnson comes through, but the, you can see, I want to see if it was a contact fumble or whether or not he was trying to switch the ball. That was a contact fumble and the ball popped out. It's Mike Reinhold that hit him, the backup nose guard. Number 45 there. Yep, he's uh, coming back First from a severe down, injury Michigan. in 1983. Gary, in this second half, Michigan's had the ball 16 minutes and 37 seconds. And Michigan's, uh, Michigan's defense has only been on the field eight minutes. So it tells you the kind of pressure that they have put on. What did we say coming into this game? Defense has been on, what, 23, 23 minutes a game? That's They're right. going to be there again, aren't they? Yep. Well, that's, that's an amazing statistic when you stop and think about it. And we have a mix-up. Can you ever remember any of your team's era averaging 23 minutes a game on defense? You know, I can't recall. We did have some pretty good defensive football. You can see Bo's upset right now, Gary, because... There was movement by the offensive line. They're not playing as clean as he would like. Illegal procedure See? on the offense. That was John Elliott, the left guard. But go ahead with that thought, Eric, about statistic of 23 minutes Yes, we had, we, we had some pretty good football teams, and of course, an offense moving the football can make a defense look good because they've had the ball a long time. By the same token, the defense can be so intimidating as they've been today, one, two, three, and out. That's all Michigan State's been able to do, that they give the offense that many more opportunities. Oof. Michigan State has had only 14 plays in this half for 19 yards. Zero first downs. They punted four times and fumbled once. Oh. Mike Swanson, our statistician, documenting their demise, their frustration of the second half. First and 15 now. Wiltshire. And Wiltshire will make it inside the 15. You know what occurs to me, Coach? You win 17 to nothing. You know what Bo's going to talk about all week? Boy, were we sloppy at the end of the football game. <laughs> That's right. Does that give the coach some cannon fodder? <laughs> it sure does. There's Lou Holtz again, his victory, and 
Purdue hanging on fourth quarter. Ohio State into Indiana's winning streak and Iowa in Madison defeating Wisconsin. He'll say, you guys, I don't care if we won 40 to nothing. We looked bad in the last half. Points well taken. They have not scored a point in this second half and a lot of opportunities. Second down now, 13, Harbaugh. Throws to the stand. He has his second touchdown catch. That's more like it. You know, Gary, what has happened to Michigan State in this ball game is the same thing that happened to Michigan last year. Their defense was on the field so long when they had the injury that it, ultimately the defense breaks down. They came back here with a bootleg pass this time very successfully as you see Harbaugh make a great fake to Jamie Morris and then roll to the flow. Excellent job here as he hits Caddis almost the same position on the field that the first touchdown was scored. He was wide open. They were in zone coverage. He split the zone. Well, Michigan State has run into a buzzsaw. Michigan certainly worthy of the number three rank. Two in a row over Michigan. They won last year in Ann Arbor. They were trying to do that for the first time since 1967. Bobby McAllister's had a long afternoon, as has his teammates, as they now trail 24 to nothing. Greg Johnson's going to let that one hit and go out of the back of the end zone of the 20. Well, this game really started out because of a fumble on the first snap. And then first Harbaugh hit the his 20. outstanding tight end, Eric Caddis. You can see Harbaugh looking off the coverage. Coming back to the near side, and the six foot six senior from Cincinnati latched onto it. That made it seven to nothing at the 12:50 mark of the first quarter. And then, almost the next time before you could take your breath, they blocked a punt. And watch this with Dieter Heron. You can see him coming untouched. Number 35, because of a mix up, blocked the punt. Ed Hood pounced on the football. And at 10:59 of the first quarter, it was 14 to nothing. And it's just been too much to come back from. Bobby McAllister rolling out. And it's intercepted. Picked off to the 20 and knocked out of bounds there. That is McIntyre. Andre McIntyre out of Chicago, a backup linebacker. Well, the best thing that can happen to McAllister is that he knows or he thinks or he hopes that he's not going to have to face another defense like this Michigan one. They have been absolutely awesome out here. Well, they came in here the number one right scoring defense and they'll certainly keep it because they got the goose egg on the board and McAllister they're gonna have to really somehow give him some confidence back and that will be their project I imagine all week long is to try to get him back ready to go oh I, what I would do as a coach I just tell Bobby McAllister I say look no one else has done it against Michigan so don't feel badly you did it against Iowa this is one of those days This is the last touchdown. Caddis with a second touchdown catch, a 14-yarder. Look at Harbaugh, his mobility. Caddis almost identical to the same catch he made to start the football game. 24 nothing. Chris Zerberg is now in at quarterback. He's the guy who played so well against Purdue a year ago, and on the keeper, moves it to the 17-yard line. That's Zerberg. He's from Alliance, Ohio. Last year against Purdue, he had four touchdown passes, 259 yards. His dad played for me at Miami of Ohio. Played offensive guard and middle linebacker back in the days where you had to go both ways. The son's a quarterback. Second down and five. Oh, wow, that, uh, that's been kind of blown out here today, hasn't it? We have a 24-point difference. Yep, straight ahead. And we have a penalty flag as he moves inside the 15-yard line. There is a flag. Bo is still pleading his case. 15 interceptions now. The school record is 25. 
And uh, they're well on course to breaking that record. You see, he was yelling out to the official, who, who did it? I would never do anything like that myself when I would never talk to the official. Never talk to him. Oh, no. I believe that. <laughs> if you believe, believe that, that, I'm going to sell you a bridge. I tell you what, Aaron, <laughs> your credibility is sinking fast. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed Bo diving over there. Phil Webb was the guy carried on that last play. We have a hold on the Holding. offense. Michigan, 10 yards. Official timeout. Washington who is unbeaten in Pac-10 play, leading packaging that and allowing us to know what's happened throughout the country. Second down now, 14 after the penalty. You see the time left. Boy, what a game it'll be next week, Michigan and Iowa. And a little like this ball game for Michigan, a year ago, Iowa beat. The Wolverines, as did Michigan State a year ago. I'm ask you a question in just a moment. Here is Erbrick on the option fake, throwing to Caddis, and he's got another one. This time he's out of bounds at the five. With the performance of Michigan today, Aaron, you could have the number one and two ranked teams playing. Oklahoma just got by Texas. Yes, we'll wait for the rankings, but it's going to be at worst number one and number three. You see this pass that was thrown exactly the companion play. Okay. That Harbaugh threw to Caddis just before that. We'll Caddis. see that in a moment. Excuse me, Eric. Caddis, 6 of 89. I have a quiz for you, Coach. Whoops. You always do your homework. And we're going to do it after this next play. I want to see if you can uh, fill in the blanks. <laughs> have a little fun here with three and a half minutes to go. Zerbrick on the option. Pitches to Webb, and Webb's going to take it in for the touchdown. We're going to have to wait a little bit on the quiz now. Webb, that's his first touchdown ever. Zerberg, I thought, did a very good job on that option. He held the ball to the last minute, made the defense commit. The left point after attempt. Boy, he gets the ball up fast. 31 to nothing. And you look at Zerbert. Out of Alliance, Ohio. Watch how he options down the line. And he really shows some courage here. He waits for the defense to commit. Waiting, waiting. Then the little flip to Webb. Webb has the corner. And it's 31 to nothing. For this sophomore, Phil Webb. He had carried the ball three times last year for 15 yards, and he just scored a touchdown. He won't forget that. And Michigan State has Illinois here next week. They've got to regroup. Sutko is kicking off. Greg Johnson will have no chance returning that one. All right, the long-awaited quiz. Down, Coach, State, what 20. are the real names of these Michigan coaches? Biff, Tad, Bump, and Bo. Well, we can go with Biff Jones, Tad Wyman. Oh, Bump Elliott, Bo <laughs> Schembechler. What did I get on that? Boy, you oh, got it. Oh, Biff Lee, yeah, yeah, all right. Tad right, Wyman, you. Bump Elliott, Bo Schembechler. i tell you what, Coach, that's Michigan good. coaches. Well, you know, 500. <laughs> That's good in baseball. <laughs> well, you got them all. You got 100%. I'm impressed. The tad would have thrown a lot of people. Uh, McAllister just looking for somewhere to hide. Get away, and he's dropped. Uh, Gary, you know, I got a little quiz for you. Oh, yeah. Here we Let's go. Let's see if you can make 50% on this one, okay? Oh. Biggie Mum, Duffy Doherty, and Muddy Waters. Patsy uh -oh. Clark. Oh, you batted a thousand. Well, I tell you, you what. You're looking good, boy. <laughs> you're looking good. I tell you what, when you work with a living legend like Eric, you learn a lot. And I learned those names last night. <laughs> From the 20 now, second down 10. And Johnson can't hang on. Let me check that. That's Keith Gates, the backup fullback. And so with 2.50 left and a long play. afternoon for Michigan State, they'll put it back to the 20-yard line. 
Dave Urema, who started the year as the Michigan State quarterback, did not dress today. He might be available next week. However, you wonder if they've committed the rest of the season to McAllister. Well, I think George Perlis is going to be able to bring this football team back together again. I, I think they play excellent defense. They have really got a tough chore going against the Michigan defense. I think, I think they're going to win some football games. It's 31 to nothing here. McAllister still hoping to somehow get a big play get on the scoreboard. And he's just having all kinds of difficulty. He intended to hit Bernard Wilson, but he was lucky to get out of there in one piece. They've been bringing a lot of heat from the right side of the field Michigan has. And really, is they guessed right or they have scouted well? Again, following on this, and we'll let you complete your thought, college football report, Jim Nance and Pat Hayden. What are you going to say, Eric? I'm just going to say that they have either through scouting or guessed right, they kept putting pressure on to the side that McAllister was rolling on. Draw him up quickly, and it's made it a tough afternoon for him. Montgomery, who has been sensational in this game, low snap, and just almost got it blocked again. Barely got it away. Coming up on the fly is John Colazar, and he'll be grounded at the 45. Michigan has it. They have a 31 to nothing lead and two and a half minutes left in the 78th meeting. What is it they call it? The ecstasy of victory, the agony of defeat. It's been a very, very bright afternoon for Michigan. On the other hand, Michigan State coming in here with high hopes of Adams shut down abruptly. Here comes Phil Webb, who scored a touchdown earlier, and he'll advance across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Eric, you want to say hello to somebody? Yeah, Coach Jack Castagnola is listening to the game in the hospital, recovering from surgery. He played at the University of Dayton when I was playing at Miami of Ohio, and just wanted him to know that we we're wishing him well and hope he's out of there in short time. Second down coming up, seven yards to go. Michigan will be 5-0 and oh after this one. Going on the road, and East Lansing coming out of there with a shutout. Now they got to go on the road again to Iowa. That's really two very difficult back-to-back -back trips, but I'm not so sure they're not equal to it. You were talking about that yesterday, uh, yesterday about how tough the Wolverine schedule is going to be, coming to Michigan State here right after they were coming off of a big game, then going out to Iowa to meet Chuck Long at a very explosive offensive football team. And they're undefeated, of course. Coming into the game now is Ernie Holloway for the first time for Michigan in a running back spot. 1.23 left in the game. Here he comes, Holloway. He is a sophomore out of Detroit across the 45 to the 44. Well, we're going to announce one of our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. And here he is for Michigan State, Phil Parker. I think it was very well documented by Ara Parsegian how well he played in this game on a run support and with an interception. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to Michigan State. And later when we announce Michigan, likewise, $1,000 will be given to that fine school. And the respect he commanded as Bo Schembechler talked about him yesterday, how fast he could support. Not only did he support fast today, he also intercepted a pass off of a run action situation. Here's a give to Holloway. By the way, in this half, Michigan has 12 first downs. Michigan State, zero. In a moment, we'll announce the Michigan most valuable player of the game. Think it might come from the defensive side? I'm I am I think I'll bet a 1,000 on this one. <laughs> wow, they've given up one touchdown now in five games. There's one of the reasons, two of them, Hammerstein and Brad Cochran. And there's our Chevrolet players of the game. How could you pick any one guy? We picked the entire Michigan defense. And I think it's an excellent choice. Here's Webb carrying the ball. Brad Cochran is one of the captains on this team, and he played extremely well, as he always does. I just, you'd have to name them all. It's really what it amounts to, Eric. There's no one that did not play well defensively, but his top-ranked scoring defense in the country is Bo Schembechler, his 151st win at Michigan. Impressive. Michigan, 31. Michigan State, nothing. Glenn Bo Schembechler, the dean of Big Ten coaches. You know, a year ago, the worst season that he's had at Michigan, 6-6, six and, six, and he got a lot of barbs during the course of the year. 
and he's come back now. He's 5-0 and oh, going into Iowa, ranked three. Everyone was counting Bo Schembechler out. Lara, the key to the game? Very simply, you've got to say the Michigan defense. Even though there were errors on the part of Michigan State that created the touchdowns for Michigan, no question about this. Number 13.